Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. What's up, everyone, and welcome. Here we are, another week, another Security Weekly Review. Let's jump right in. We start off with patches. Cisco fixed remote code execution issue in Firepower Device Manager on Box Software. Cisco has, has addressed a vulnerability in the Firepower Device Manager on Box Software. Track this CVE 2021-1518 that could be exploited by an attacker to execute arbitrary code on vulnerable devices. FDM on Box allows administrators to manage the firewall without a centralized manager like the FMC and provides diagnostics capabilities. The flaw resides in the REST API of Cisco Firepower Device Manager on Box Software. It is due to lack of proper sanitation, uh, sanitization of user input on specific REST API commands. A vulnerability in the REST API of Cisco Firepower Device Manager on Box Software could allow an, on, an authenticated remote attacker to execute arbitrary code on the underlying operating system of an affected device. Next up, Pulse Connect secure VPN appliances that could be exploited to execute arbitrary code with root privileges. IT firm Avanti released security updates to address multiple vulnerabilities in its Pulse Connect secure VPN appliances. The most severe flaw tracked to CVE 2021-22937 is a high severity remote code execution vulnerability that resides in the admin web interface of Pulse Connect Secure. A remote attacker could exploit the flaw to overwrite arbitrary files and gain code execution with root privileges. The flaw received a CVSS uh, score of 9.1. Experts pointed out that it results from a bypass of the patch release in October 2021 to address the then CVE 2020-8260 issue. Successful exploitation of this issue results in remote code execution on the underlying operating system with root privileges. An attacker with such access will be able to circumvent any restrictions enforced via the web ap application as well as remount the file system, allowing them to create a persistent backdoor, extract and decrypt credentials, compromise VPN clients, or pivot into the internal network. VMware addresses critical flaws in its products. VMware has released security updates to address multiple flaws in its products, including a critical issue that could allow an attacker to access confidential information. A couple of vulnerabilities tracked as CVE 2021-22002 and CVE 2021-22003 impact Workspace One Access, Identity Manager, vRealize Automation, Cloud Foundation, and vRealize Suite Lifecycle Manager. A remote attacker could exploit the flaw to overwrite arbitrary files and gain code execution with root privileges. The flaw received a CVSS score of 9.1. Experts pointed out that it results from a bypass of the patch released in October 2021 to address the CVE 2020-8260 issue. CVE 2021-22002 is related to VMware Workspace One Access and Identity Manager, which allows to the CFG web app and diagnostic endpoints via port 443 by using a custom host header. Furthermore, VMware Workspace One Access and Identity Manager allow the slash CFG web app and diagnostic endpoints on port 8443 to be accessed via port 443 using a custom host header. VMware has evaluated this issue to be a of important severity with a maximum CVSS version 3 base score of 8.6, states the report and uh, reads the security advisory published by the company. A malicious actor with network access to port 443 could tamper with host headers to facilitate access to the slash CFG web app. In addition, a malicious, a malicious blah, actor could access slash CFG diagnostic endpoints without authentication. The CVE 2021-22003 flaw is an information disclosure vulnerability that resides in the VMware Workspace One access and identity management. Both solutions unintentionally provide a login interface on port 7443, an attacker could exploit the issue to enumerate the users or conduct brute force attack on the endpoint. We move on to attacks, vulnerabilities, and updates. Starting off with Ghost Emperor, a new Chinese-speaking threat actor targets Southeast Asia. Kaspersky experts spotted a previously undocumented Chinese-speaking threat actor tracked as Ghost Emperor that is targeting Microsoft Exchange flaws in attacks on high-profile victims. The long-running operation carried out by the group mostly targeted entities in Southeast Asia, 
including several government entities and telecom companies. Ghost Emperor used a loading scheme that relies on a component of the Cheat Engine open source project, which allows it to bypass the Windows driver signature enforcement mechanism. The group stands out because it uses a formerly unknown Windows kernel mode rootkit. Rootkits provide remote control access over the servers they target. Acting covertly, rootkits are notorious for hiding from investigators and security solutions. To bypass the Windows driver signature enforcement mechanism, Ghost Emperor uses a loading scheme involving a component of, again, the open source project named Cheat Engine. More evidence suggests that Darkseid and Black Matter are the same group. Bleepy Computer found evidence that after the clamorous uh, colonial pipeline attack, the Darkseid ransomware gang has rebranded as a new Black Matter ransomware operation. The experts analyzed encryption algorithms in a decryptor used by Black Matter, which is actively attacking corporate entities. Bleepy Computer became aware of a victim that paid a four million dollar ransom to Black Matter to the B Black Matter gang. The company received by uh, received by the cyber criminals gang both Windows and Linux ESXi decryptors. Bleeping Computer shared a decryptor from a Black Matter victim with MCSoft CTO Fabian Wosar, who confirmed that the new ransomware gang is using the same unique encryption methods, a custom implementation of Salsa 20 matrix, um, implemented by Darkseid. Now, honestly, I have no idea who these guys are. What I can say is that it is known that Black Matter claims to be using the best parts from other known ransomware groups. In an interview with the uh, recorded future, a Black Matter group member specifically said they used Darkseid, Lockbit, and Revel as a base for their ransomware. He said in his interview, the executable itself what has in uh, has incorporated the ideas of Lockbit, Revel, and partly Darkseid. The web part has incorporated the technical approach of Darkseid since... As he says, we consider it the most structurally correct. Separate companies for each target and so on. Those are the things that they incorporated from Darkseid. So, maybe the entire Darkseid group rebranded, re or maybe just some members from Darkseid. Um, Lockbit and Revel kind of banded together f to form this new group, or just maybe it's a completely new group. Who knows? You know, less than two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, they were saying they believe that Black Matter was Revel. Now they're saying that they believe Black Matter is uh, Dark Side rebranded. Only time will tell, and who knows if we'll ever find out. Just know that Black Matter is a force. They're incorporating some really, really serious stuff from these other groups, things that they've learned, um, so it's a dangerous entity to be attacked by. Data leak affects about 3,000 New York City students and 100 employee officials confirmed. Personal information, including academic records and biographical data of about 3,000 New York City public school students and 100 Education Department staff members, was inadvertently shared more widely than intended, Education Department officials confirmed last Thursday. At least one student within the public school system managed to access a Google Drive that contained the private information of students and department employees across the city. So, Google Drive, got to make sure you have the right permissions on those files. Um, lesson hopefully learned. Ransomware shuts down online service of Joplin, Missouri. A July 7th network of security incident that caused the Joplin uh, city government's computer system to shut down is believed to be the result of ransomware, the city said Thursday in a statement amid an ongoing investigation. An insurer has paid an unknown person $320,000 to keep any sensitive information obtained as a result of the cyber attack from being exposed. The city then uh, said in a statement from city manager Nick Edwards. So they paid 320 grand to some unknown person who claimed that they'd keep this information secret. An investigation into who conducted the attack is still underway. Systems that were shut down by the attacker included computer servers and programs that operated the city's online services. The city's internet-based telephone system also was interrupted, but was restored two days after the attack. Third-party cybersecurity firms were hired to recover the city's information technology systems. In addition to restoring those systems, an information technology forensic firm has been hired to investigate the scope of the network security intrusion and determine what data may have been accessed. Motherboard vendor Gigabyte hit by Ransom X ransomware gang. Taiwanese computer hardware vendor Gigabyte has suffered a ransomware attack and hackers are currently threatening to release more than 112 gigabytes of business data on the dark web unless the company agrees to their ransom demands. 
The Taiwanese company confirmed the attack in a phone call and in a message on its no, now known Taiwanese website. Now down, excuse me, Taiwanese website. A spokesperson said the incident did not impact production uh, systems. Only a few internal servers at its Taiwanese headquarters have been affected and have now been taken down and isolated. While the company did not name the attackers, the record obtained access through a source to a dark web page containing the ransomware gang's extortion demands. The page is hosted on a dark web portal where members of the Ransom X ransomware cartel usually host threats to hacked companies and leak data from those that refuse to pay. Now, I find it always interesting from a lot of these companies, let's say, you know, it didn't affect our day to day business, but yeah, okay, that's fine. But they still have 112 gigabytes of your business data. It could be trade secrets. It could be schematics. It could be this, that, and the other thing that's um, extremely important to your business if leaked or sold to a competitor. So the fact that your business wasn't offline is great, but you know your 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 lax security um, has put the company in jeopardy. Israeli cyber company detects severe Amazon security breach. Now, before you get all excited, it's about the Amazon Kindle, which I really don't know at this point how many people still have or use. But a severe security breach was detected in Amazon's ebook tablet Kindle by the Israeli cybersecurity provider Checkpoint. According to the company's Israeli cyber investigators, the security breach found allowed them to hack the tablets, gain full control, and steal the e-reader users' Amazon accounts. Now, that's pretty serious. Checkpoint's findings were revealed at DEF CON, the world's largest hacker and cybersecurity convention held annually in Las Vegas. The annual conventions are regularly attended by FBI agents on top of the companies in the cyber field. The company managed to hack into the Kindles by exploiting a breach that occurs as the tablet is processing an ebook. Um, uh, processing an ebook the reader has clicked on. By clicking on an ebook infected by malware, users could lose control of both their tablet and their Amazon accounts without even being aware of the cyber attack occurring. A flaw in GitHub Actions workflow for PyPy's source repository could be exploited to potentially execute arbitrary code on PyPy.org. Security researchers Riotac disclosed three flaws in PyPy. The most severe one could potentially lead to the compromise of the entire PyPy infrastructure. Python Package Index PyPy is the official third-party software repository for Python. PyPy is, or as an index, allows users to search for packages by keywords or by filters against their metadata, such as free software license or compatibility with POSIX. The flaw affects the combined prs.yaml workflow in slash warehouse which includes the current source code of PyPy. This workflow allows to collect pull requests that have branch names starting with dependabot and merge them into a single pull request. The workflow fails to verify the pull request author. This means that anyone could create a pull request with a specific name and have the workflow process it. Nine vulnerabilities in critical infrastructure used by 80% of major hospitals in North America. Armis researchers have identified a set of nine critical vulnerabilities in the leading solution for pneumatic tube systems in North America, the TransLogic PTS system by Swiss Log Healthcare. This system is used in over 80% of hospitals in North America and installed in more than 3,000 hospitals worldwide. PTS systems play a crucial role in patient care and are utilized nearly 100% of the time. Dubbed Pond Piper, the vulnerabilities allow for complete takeover of the Translogic Nexus control panel, which powers all current models of Translogic PTS stations. Older IP connected Translogic stations are also impacted but are no longer supported by Swiss Log. The Swiss Log PTS system is vital to hospital operations as it automates logistics and the transport of materials throughout the hospital via a network of pneumatic tubes. The system is designed so that hospitals can provide better patient care with automated material transport that includes highly sensitive materials such as lab specimens, blood products, pathology lab tests, medications, and more. Prior to the use of PTS systems, hospitals were required to transfer the various items manually. Today, due to their wide adoption, these systems are vital for proper workflow of hospital operations. These vulnerabilities can enable an unauthenticated attacker to take over TransLogic PTS stations and essentially gain complete control over the PTS network of a targeted hospital. 
This type of control could enable sophisticated and worrisome ransomware attacks as well as allow attackers to leak sensitive hospital information. The TransLogic PTS system is an advanced system that integrates with other hospital systems, which may allow the information shared between these systems to be leaked or manipulated by an attacker if the TransLogic PTS network were to be compromised. Judson ISD says it paid hackers more than half a million dollars to protect sensitive information. The ransomware attack that hit Judson Independent School District in June resulted in a payment to the hackers of more than half a million dollars to keep sensitive information from being uploaded to the dark web. The ransom payment of $547,045 will keep identifiable information from being published online in places where other threat actors could potentially access and misuse this data. The June 17th attack shut down the district's phone computers and email and compromised some people's personal information. The district, which has about 26,600 students and employees across more than 30 schools, did not recover access to its phone and email systems until July 19th. Vision for Hope Notification of Data Security Incident Vision for Hope recently discovered an incident that may have involved the personal information or protected health information of some of its patients or other individuals. Although Hope has no reason to believe that any personal information or protected health information has been misused for the purpose of committing fraud or identity theft, it is notifying the potentially affected patients to advise them about the steps it has taken to address the incident and provide them with guidance on what they can do to protect themselves. Hope recently discovered that an unknown, unauthorized person gained access to the email account of one Hope employee from February 14, 2021 to April 2, 2021. Italian Energy Company reports ransomware attack conducted by Lockbit 2.0 gang. Recently, the Italian Energy Company ERG was hit by the Lockbit 2.0 ransomware gang. Now the company reported only a few minor disruptions for its ICT infrastructure. The company is active in the production of wind energy, solar energy, hydroelectric energy, and high-yield thermoelectric cogeneration energy with low environmental impact. ERG added that all its plants are operating smoothly and have not experienced any downtime, thus ensuring continuous business operations. Again, the company saying, you know, okay, our day-to-day -day business hasn't been affected, but again, potentially serious information has been stolen. The ransomware gang has already added the Italian company to the list of victims published on its leak site. The crooks will start leaking the stolen data on August 14th, 2021 at midnight. Australian Cybersecurity Centre reports multiple victims of Lockbit 2.0 ransomware. Yeah, we just talked about one of them. A ransomware attack called Lockbit 2.0 has hit multiple organizations across various industrial sectors, according to the Australian Cybersecurity Centre, with a government body publishing a medium alert for the cybercrime. The ACSC says the attack sees victims receive uh, sees victims receive receiving, I guess, demands for ransom payments and the encryption of data, with some reporting they have received threats that data stolen during the incidents will be published publicly. According to the center, Lockbit 2.0 restricts access to corporate files and systems by encrypting them into a locked and unusable format. Victims receive instructions on how to engage with the offenders after encryption. Lockbit affiliates have successfully deployed ransomware on corporate systems in a variety of countries and sectors, including Australia, where the ACSE is aware of numerous incidents since 2020. StarHub suffers da data breach, but says no system was compromised. StarHub says personal data of its customers, including email addresses and mobile numbers, have been found on a dump site. The Singapore Telco, however, insists none of its customer database or data systems has been breached. So how did the data get there? The data breach was discovered during a proactive online surveillance on July 6 by its cybersecurity team, StarHub said in a statement late Friday unveiling the breach. On its website, informing customers of the incident, the telco said it needed time to investigate the incident and assess the impact before confirming the breach publicly. The relevant authorities, however, were informed of the breach. According to its statement to local media, StarHub said an illegally uploaded file containing the leaked data was found on a third-party data dump website. It added that the information appeared to be uh, date back to 2007. Hackers accessed data of 355,000 people at University of Kentucky. Limited information for more than 350,000 students and teachers was accessed through a website hack of a database at the University of Kentucky College of Education, officials announced. UK officials said the breach was detected during an annual cybersecurity inspection. 
The Compromised College of Education Database Digital Driver's License is a free resource used by Kentucky K-12 schools and colleges for online teaching, learning, and testing. Digital Driver's License contain names and email addresses of more than 355,000 students and teachers in all 50 states and 22 countries. However, the hacked database did not contain financial, health, or social security information, which makes the risk of identity theft significantly limited, according to Jay Blenton, uh, UK's chief communications officer. But if you've been following me and listening to me, then you know that this information, you don't need identity theft. You can use this information for sophisticated phishing attacks to where you can scam and rip off people and get credentials to other accounts. So telling me that... Uh, identity theft is is probably it is not doable with this doesn't make me feel any safer for these 355,000 people because combining the knowledge that they were associated with the UK uh, um, and this database could be used in a sophisticated phishing attack to get them to sign into some other account or um, give out credentials to other accounts WordPress download manager plugin was affected by two flaws Researchers from WordFence team discovered a vulnerability tracked as CVE 2021-34639, affecting the WordPress Download Manager plugin that could allow attackers to execute arbitrary code under specific configurations. The flaw could allow authors and other users with the upload files capability to upload files with PHP 4 extensions as well as other potentially executable files. The plugin was vulnerable to a double extension attack that could occur when attackers submit a file with multiple extensions in order to get it being executed. Experts pointed out that although the CVSS score of this vulnerability is 7.5, its exploitation is not simple because in a real attack scenario, the use of a .htaccess file in the downloads directory making it difficult to execute uploaded files. Infra Holt is a set of vulnerabilities affecting a popular TCP IP library, commonly OT devices manufactured by more than 200 vendors. Security researchers found security team uh, from security teams at Forescout and JFrog have disclosed today 14 vulnerabilities that impact a popular TCP IP library named Niche Stack, commonly used in industrial equipment and operational technology devices manufactured by more than 200 vendors. Niche Stack, aka InterNiche Stack, is a proprietary TCP IP stack developed by, originally by InterNiche Technologies and acquired by HCC Embedded in 2016. Niche Stack is used by several devices in the operational technology and critical infrastructure space, such as the popular Siemens S7 line of PLCs. The new vulnerabilities allow for remote code execution, denial of service, information leak, TCP spoofing, or DNS cache poisoning, states the report. Four, four Scout Research Labs and JFrog Security Research exploited two of their remote code execution vulnerabilities in their lab and showed the potential effects of a successful um, attack. The flaw could be exploited by a threat actor that has gained access to the OT network of an organization. Advanced Technology Ventures discloses ransomware attack and data breach. Advanced Technology Ventures is an American venture capital firm with more than $1.8 billion in capital under management. The venture capital firm this week disclosed a ransomware attack. Threat actors have also stolen the personal information of some of its pri uh, private investors. ATV reported that the security breach took place in July. The ransomware operators, operators stole financial information stored on two servers before encrypting them. On July 9, 2021, the company learned from its third-party information technology provider that there had been anomalous activity on two identical ATV servers on which the company stored financial reporting information. The company soon determined that the servers had been encrypted by a ransomware attack. On July 26, 2021, the company learned that there was evidence of both unauthorized access to and exfiltration of the contents of the server. That's what a data breach notification letter sent to affected main, uh, main residents read. Stolen data includes names, emails, phone numbers, and social security numbers of some private investors. Ransom X ransomware leaks files stolen from Italian luxury brand Zegna. Ermenegildo Zegna Group is the largest menswear brand in the world by revenue. As of 2018, Ermenegilda Zegna operated 480 retail stores, 267 of which com uh, company owned, across the world. Following the company's strongly export-oriented strategy, exports account for over 90% of total sales. The RansomX ransomware group claims to have stolen 20.74 gigabytes of data from the company and leaked 43 archives 
43 archives of 500 megabytes in size and one archive containing 239.54 megabytes of documents. CVE 2021-20090 actively exploited to target millions of um, IoT devices worldwide. Threat actors actively exploit a critical authentication bypass vulnerability tracked as CVE 2021-20090, impacting home routers with Arcadian firmware to deploy a Murray bot. Or Murray bot? A path traversal vulnerability in the web interfaces of Buffalo WSR 2533DHPL2 firmware version uh, 253DHHP3 firmware version could allow unauthenticated remote attackers to by, uh, bypass authentication. This flaw potentially affects millions of IoT devices manufactured by no less than 17 vendors, including some ISPs. The ongoing attacks were spotted by researchers from Juniper Threat Labs. Experts believe that were conducted by a threat actor that targeted IoT devices in a campaign since February. We now move on to other security news, also interesting. U.S. CISA and NSA publish guidance to secure Kubernetes deployments. U.S. CISA and NSA released new guidance that provides recommendations to harden Kubernetes deployments. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating computer application deployment, scaling, and management. In recent months, the number of cyber attacks against misconfigured Kubernetes systems has surged. Threat actors mainly used the uh, systems to illegally mine cryptocurrencies. The guidance details the security challenges associated with setting up and securing a Kubernetes cluster. The advisory also includes recommendations to harden the installs and to properly configure them. It guides system administrators and developers of national security systems on how to deploy Kubernetes with example configurations for the recommended hardening measures and mitigations. The guidance states that the three common sources of compromising Kubernetes are supply chain risks, malicious threat actors, and insider threats. The list of mitigations provided by the U.S. agencies includes scan containers and pods for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations, run containers and pods with the least privilege possible, use network separation to control the amount of damage uh, compromised can cause, use firewalls to limit unneeded network connectivity and encryption, uh, and encryption to protect confidentiality, Use strong authentication and authorization to limit user and administrator access as well as to limit the attack surface. Use log auditing so that administrators can monitor activity and be alerted to potential malicious activity. Periodically review all Kubernetes settings and to use vulnerability scans to help ensure risks are appropriately accounted for and security patches are applied. SolarWinds urges U.S. judge to toss out crap InfoSec Sue Ball. Whew, sounds rough. SolarWinds is urging a U.S. federal judge to throw out a lawsuit brought against it by aggrieved shareholders who say they were misled about its security posture in advance of the infamous Russian attack on the business. Insisting that it was the victim of the most sophisticated cyber attack in history, in a court filing, SolarWinds described a lawsuit from some of its smaller shareholders as an attempt to convert the sophisticated cybercrime into an unrelated securities fraud court case. Financial news Newswire Reuters reported that the suit was originally filed over allegations that former SolarWinds chief exec Kevin Thompson cut cybersecurity efforts in the hope of driving greater dividends into the pockets of major investors. Silver Lake and Toma Bravo, who each reportedly held around 40% of the SolarWinds stocks at the time. Disgruntled ransomware affiliate leaks the Conti Gang's technical manuals. I have the manuals. I'm contemplating whether or not I do a review on them, but let's see. A disgruntled member of the Conti ransomware program has leaked today the manuals and technical guides used by the Conti Gang to train affiliate members on how to access, move laterally, and escalate access in, inside a hacked company and then exfiltrate its data before encrypting files. Leaked on an underground cybercrime forum named XSS earlier today, such last week, the files were shared by an individual who appears to have had an issue with the low amount of money the Conti Gang was paying them to breach corporate networks. In messages spammed across the forum, the individual shared screenshots of IP addresses where the Conti Gang hosts Cobalt Strike command and control servers, which Conti affiliate members use to access the hacked company networks. In addition, the individual also published a rare archive named, I can't read that in Russian, 
but which roughly translates to manuals for hard workers and software.rare, which is the manuals and tutorials on how to use the tools that they use to gain access and control corporate networks. Leaked document says Google fired dozens of employees for data misuse. Now, I've seen numbers ranging from dozen to 80. Google fired dozens of employees between 2018 and 2020 for abusing their access to the company's tools or data, with some workers potentially facing allegations of accessing Google user or employee data, according to an internal Google document obtained by Motherboard. The document provides concrete figures on an often delicate part of tech giants operations, investigations into how the company's own employees leverage their positions to steal, leak, or abuse data they may have access to. Insider abuse is a problem across the tech industry. Motherboard previously uncovered instances at Facebook, Snapchat, and MySpace, with employees in some cases using their access to stalk or otherwise spy on users. The document says that Google terminated 36 employees in 2020 to security-related issues. 86% of all security-related allegations against employees included mishandling of confidential information, such as the transfer of internal-only information to outside parties. Now, this just underscores the fact that the intentional or non-intentional attacks can happen from right inside your company. So using least privilege first principles inside your company are an important step to further secure your company and clients. Now, if you remember a couple stories ago, um, when the CISA and NSA were giving recommendations for hardening Kubernetes, one of their uh, principles was least privilege first um, to, to mitigate potential internal attacks. Decrypto released by Prometheus ransomware victims. Four previous ransomware victims. Taiwanese security firm Psycraft has released a free application that can help victims of the Prometheus ransomware recover and decrypt some of their files. Available on GitHub, the decryptor effectively works by brute forcing the encryption key used to lock the victim's data. The Prometheus ransomware uses SALSA20 with a tick count based random password to encrypt the files. The size of the random password is 32 bytes, and every character is a visible character. Since the password used the tick count as the key, we could guess it brutally, the company's experts wrote in a blog post at the start of the month. The only downside of Psycraft's decryptor is that it can only handle brute forcing the decryption key for, from small files only. MCSoft, the company known for breaking several ransomware strains, has told the record. Critical Cobalt Strike bug leaves botnet servers vulnerable to takedown. Governments, vigilantes, and criminal hackers have a new way to disrupt botnets running the widely used attack software Cobalt Strike, courtesy of research published on last Wednesday. Cobalt Strike is a legitimate security tool used by penetration testers to emulate malicious activity in a network. Over the past few years, malicious hackers, working on behalf of a nation state or in search of profit, have increasingly embraced the software. For both defender and attacker, Cobalt Strike provides a soup to nuts collection of software packages that allow infection, infected computers and attacker servers to interact in highly customizable ways. Researchers at security firm Sentinel One recently found a critical bug in the team server that makes it easy to knock the server offline. The bug works by sending a server fake replies that squeeze every bit of available memory from the C2's web server thread, so effectively a denial of service. Pegasus spyware, how it works, and what it collects. Revelations about Pegasus surveillance software continue to come a week after a consortium of 17 media outlets began publishing stories about the spy tool. So, how does Pegasus work and what does it capture? Based on a Pegasus marketing brochure, which again I have and I plan to do a review about, uh, that was leaked online and appears to have been created in 2016, Pegasus can collect usernames and some passwords for unlocking the device itself or for gaining access to the target's email account or other accounts like Skype, WhatsApp, Twitter, and Facebook. It can extract all data stored on the phone, including the user's database of contacts, text messages sent and received, emails, photos, voice memos, calendar entries, call history, and browsing history. It can also activate the phone's camera to grab images of the user or their surroundings, 
and it can activate the microphone to eavesdrop and record voice and VoIP calls in real time or monitor conversations occurring in the vicinity of a phone, for example, while it sits atop a restaurant table or the desk in a worker's office. And it can collect GPS data from the phone to track the user's location and movements on a map. So instead of just waiting for information to arrive, hoping this is the information you were looking for, the operator actively retrieves inf important information from the device, getting the exact information he was looking for. That's what the marketing literature states. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to smash the bell if you haven't. And have a great week. See you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.